today, we will talk about the Word Web Browser Part 2, and in this particular, we will talk about the browser, web browsers, the domain name system, DNS servers, and the web servers. So, we already discussed last week that basically how the web works is a summary between the interaction of these three systems. Interaction we're going to have the World Wide Web is an interaction of these three systems. We have the web browsers or the clients, the DNS servers, and the web servers. And today we're going to talk exactly how does it work? How does the web browser work? How, how does the domain name system work? And how does the web servers work? Okay, so but before anything else, why is it? And I'm not going to discuss third. This is web development one course. Why do we have to discuss about how the World Wide Web works? Okay, so it's like it's like it's like being a mechanic. Let's say a, a car mechanic without knowing anything about the car. All right. So basically, since uh, we are information technology students, and we are we are aiming to become web developers, web designers. Course, obviously, we have to learn something about the platform that we will be working on. Since web development is for the World Wide Web, that's why we have to learn something about the World Wide Web. Okay, so that's just how uh, this is easy to start. So, let's start with just a review on last meeting. We discussed the kind of general idea on how the web works. So, basically, here it is this is how it works. So, first is the client, which is the web browser sends a request through URL or HTTP request. The URL is sent to the DNS server to get the IP address through the internet. That's the very first thing that that is going to do. So every time that you visit the website, the first thing that, that what's going to happen is using HTTP request, your browser will send or the URL is sent to the DNS server to get the IP address. Now the IP address is like the phone book of the internet. Basically, it contains all the IP address or internet protocol of each computer or each server where you where that website is saved from. So, para pag magkuha na ganyan ang IP address, pangitaon na nagayon, pag asa na ang location. So, once the computer or the server is located, then the request will be made, and then the content, um, the content or the web server will process the request. Um, collect all the web contents necessary and convert it into HTML form. Now, the reason why it's always been in HTML form is because our browser can only read HTML. Right? And then, so that once it's once the content is converted to HTML form, it will be sent back. The content is sent back to the browser in HTML form through the internet again until such time that you will see it in our screen. So, for example, we will visit Norso website. So if we enter norso.edu.ph. So the URL will be used to locate the IP address to the DNS server. And once that IP address is located, that IP address will be used to locate the computer or the server where Norso website is located. And then once the um, website is located, the web server will process the request and send it back to the client through an HTML form, basically through the internet system. And then that's the time that we will see that in our screen. So again, there are only three systems that works together, uh, so that we'll be able to see the website that we are trying to see. So it's also the same case with, not just for website, but any other web browsers or clients, like Lula Taug Online Game. So every time you hit Taug Attack, Anyway, it's already been connected with the IP address, but the web server will process it and send back the result to your end. That's why I'm not going to miss anyone who has attacked. I'm not going to miss anyone who has Okay? So, question. Since I'm going to make a request, when I'm going a specific protocol, I'm going to process the request all throughout the process from the client to web server and back to the client again. This is TTP, sir. Uh, Gando, go ahead and say Internet. Okay, that is, basically, the internet is the highway. Yes, I'm again, because the internet is like the highway. Pero, na specific, na sulugoon, 
gcast na client, madalong sa DNS server, madalong sa web server, and then back to the client. Please na na siya. HTTP, sir. HTTP. Domain name. It's the HTTP. Remember? It's an HTTP request. We will talk more about HTTP later on, uh, maybe soon, but HTTP is a protocol, and that is what makes the transfer the request possible. So, siya ang the process in making this request. Although siya sa DNS, to get the IP address, it will be used to locate the, um, the web server and then send back to the client through HTTP. So, that's why every time that you visit the website, HTTP, that means it uses HTTP protocol or hypertext transfer protocol in making web requests. Okay? Napailain nga mga protocols aside from HTTP. Let's say, for example, this is easy of you. Now that we are kani, kani sa akong browser run, now that you are seeing me in my end, and you're seeing me, uh, you're seeing me in your end, and I'm seeing you in your end, in my end, it's using another protocol, and that's called RTP. So another example of an protocol is, or internet protocol is RTP, that is real-time transfer protocol. But anyway, we'll talk more about it in the future, but this is just to give you an idea and I will the process of request aside from HTTP, that is RTP, just like what we're doing now, and I real-time that uses RTP or real-time transfer protocol. Napa, kung ganahan kang mo send of email sa imong feature, kana late ka sa imong submission, it uses SMTP. What, what that is, is simple mail transfer protocol. Okay? So, this just to show you na naapulaan niya mga H or internet protocol depending on the type of request that we're doing. So again, since right now, my computer is requesting your computer to see each other, it uses RTP. And then every time that you would send an email to another friend or maybe to your teachers or just anybody, it uses SMTP or simple mail transfer protocol. And there are other IP protocols or internet protocols. We'll talk more about it. So basically, that is the general idea on how the web works. But I can't say it's a explanation. But this time around, we'll talk about what happens in the client. Okay? What happens in the client part, what happens in the DNS server part, and the web server part. So we're going to discuss before each request is made, before each, um, before getting the IP address, and before getting the web content, something like that. We'll discuss it one by one. Let's start with the client or the web browsers. Clients are devices and software that request and render web content. So this includes web browsers, online game, online games, music and video streaming applications, online shopping applications, and many more. Okay, again, before we proceed, um, we're talking about clients here, and then web browsers are just examples of web clients. Who can give us another example of our client? Anyone? Safari, sir. Okay, that's web browser, right? So Safari, Chrome, uh, top and Edge, and then Explorers. Uh, that's already an example of a web browser. Any other example of a client? Opera Mini, sir. Is it a client? Oh, okay. Br web browser, we have a client. Okay, again, clients are YouTube, web sir. YouTube, okay, that's correct. YouTube app using our phones. Okay, so again, web browsers like Chrome are just examples of clients. So there are other examples, it's like say here we have web browsers, online games. So can you guys give any other examples again? So YouTube app is correct? Spotify, sir. Spotify, that's correct. So basically, Facebook. Any, yeah, Facebook, any application or device that requests web content is an example of client. So, before we proceed, ato sang sabta ng sanin client. Okay, dili lang ni siya web browsers only, okay? So, again, Facebook app. And uh, it's still a web browser, but specific for Facebook content. And then Spotify, Netflix, um, YouTube app, games. Let's say Call of Duty. Okay? 
um, mobile legend. Any applications or software that request web content is an example of client. Okay, next is, so, but this time around, we'll focus more on the web browser. Anyway, uh, those like streaming applications, games, all those processes are the same, but we were in this discussion, we, were focus, we will focus more on the web browser. A web browser is a software application for accessing web contents on the World Wide Web. According to wikipedia.org, Google Chrome is the most used web browser with a 64% with a global market share on all devices, followed by Safari, Mozilla Firefox, and it matters best. Okay, so um, Chrome is the most widely used web browser in the entire world consisting or using 64% of or sharing 64% global market. Basically 64% of all the devices around the globe is using Google Chrome. So that's why in this in this course we will be using mostly Google Chrome when it comes to designing a website. So basically you all know what Google Chrome looks like and basically how to use it. This is an example of so what do we usually see here? We have here the, the browser screen. We have here the URL box. We have here extension or bookmark uh, bar. And then we have here the control bar, the close, minimize, and uh, maximize. We have here the navigation, if I'm a type back or forward, with, uh, reload, home page, so on and so forth. So basically we all know how browsers work, we all know how to use it. Do we? Yes, sir. 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 Yes, Browsers use hypertext transfer protocol or HTTP and communicating the web servers in requesting web content. Once the browser receives the web content, it uses its rendering engine to render the con web content like HTML files, JavaScript, images, videos, and any other supporting files on screen. Okay, so there's one word na medyo, medyo natingal tanan na asya, na asya rendering engine. Okay, so na mura pa din isa takyanan di ay kinasya engine. Okay, yes, browsers do have Engine, and that is called rendering engine. Basically, it when it uses to render web contents like HTML files, JavaScript, images, videos, and any other supported files on the screen. So maybe you've noticed already, the yeah, website code strategy It's just a bunch of codes. And para di po siguro nindot tanawon ng atong matanaw sa screen mo bisit ang website ng atong makita kay code like lines of codes, di ba? So, delication into the experience. Therefore, the rendering engine of our browser converts those codes to something that you will see on our screen. It converts codes to graphics. Okay, so what are these codes? We have HTML files, JavaScript, and then any other supported files. So, basically, images, videos, these are when you design a website, this will be converted to codes. And the rendering engine will turn it back to graphics the moment that we will see it on our screen. So basically, that's how a browser works. Browsers components. So let's talk about before the browser. Before the browser, we all know that browsers make the request and process um, web contents or web requests. But how exactly does it do it? Uh, does it do its job? Browsers are usually made up of different components, like the browser user interface browser UI, internal engine, rendering engine, I internal engine, my rendering engine, my browser user interface, we added working component, data storage, and the JavaScript interpreter. So now I feel like one, two, three, four, five, six, six components of a browser that work together so that we'll be able to enjoy our web surfing um, experience, something like that. So let's talk about it one by one. Let's start with that. So browser user interface. So it's called UI or UX, user interface, user experience. 
The browser user interface is the overall appearance of the web browser. It contains the tools, navigations, and controls on how the browser is being used. This includes the address bar, navigation button, menu bar, bookmark button, and more. Okay, so let's atong ato pangitaw ni sila kaning address bar, navigation button, menu bar, bookmark tabs, and more. So let's start with the address bar. So if this is the web browser, example of a web browser, asa siguro ang address bar? Then katagamit ng the Chrome before. Sino makita na yun? Okay. Okay, go ahead and grab that. Sige, grab that. Go ahead. Asa ang address bar? Uh, the address bar so is where you can locate the URL. Uh, it is where you can find the URL, sir, or the address. Okay, that's right. So, kanin. Alright. So, dili na ito ginabutang ang kuan, di ba? Ang, ato, ang QR, the URL or the web address every time that you go to the website. So, for example, ato ka youtube.com. So, you click here, type youtube.com, and then the browser will display YouTube kung ang internet. Okay, so that's the address bar. And then, ito pa. Navigation button. Okay, anyone? Asa siguro ang navigation button? Madala, dali. Okay, these, these are the navigation buttons. Nagawa kong mouse. Wala akong cursor. Ay, dala. Di ba kita akong cursor? Kadali lang ha. Ang islan. Red. Okay, better. So, these are the navigation so, pwede ka move back, or move forward, reload, and then click here to go back to your homepage. Cast navigation. Um, so, pa. Menu bar. Okay, the menu bar is, kanin eh. Kanin nga area right here. Diba? Am I correct? Or maybe sa laing nga, laing nga browser is different. Because ang uh, menu bar sa Chrome is ilan ang ibutang, ilan ang itaguan. Dari na. But other web browsers, let me try to open the edge. Sa karapan na, karoon na agad na file edit sa takdal na corner usual. Wala na na agad ka display. Wala po ko yung Firefox. So I guess I cannot show the old version. So ano panahon, kabantay mo na ay dari na yung nakaputang file, edit, or something like that dari nga area. So that's the menu bar, but this time around the menu bar is now located here. And then what else? And then bookmarks, bookmark tabs. Okay, I usually keep bookmarks for easier access. Para mas madali na kung magsagi memorize the website, click save lang na ako ang bookmark, put it right here, and then just click and then ready. For example, to be honest, dili ko ganang magsagi memorize sa link. So, ang ginabuhat, maybe you're also doing it on your own. Um, this is what I usually do. Uh, Ginasave na ko sa part, atong klase. Eh. Uh, ang atong Google link. For example, tara. Click na ko ng Meet folder and then here's the list of my um, Google Meet classes. So, we have ITS 300, the one that we're doing now. And then ITS 304, ITS 101, and ITS 303. What well, focus classes that I don't see at ALT? Let's talk about it later. All right, so that is one of the use of, on, of a bookmark, obviously, so that you don't necessarily have to memorize the link that you'll be needing in the future. All right, and many more. So obviously, we have here the Beninga area. It's the browser screen. We didn't have to mask it at Contents the website. Visit. So every time that we're going to design a website, obviously this will be the place where it will be displayed. All right, and many more. Okay, so anyway, you already know what the browser is and how to use it. You should know the functionalities of each part. So I'm not going to take my time on discussing that. So let's talk about the browser's components. So we have the internal engine. What is the internal engine? Internal engine processes any commands made in the browser user interface. For example, the user clicks the back button of the browser, and then the internal engine will then process the request by checking the browsing history. Get the URL of the previous page so that it can be reloaded. Okay? So 
when we say internal engine, it's just the, let me change that to yellow. Okay, the internal engine processes any commands made in the browser user interface. So for example, if I'm going to open up a browser here, this is an, a live browser. So for example, move this to of a classroom, a Google Classroom. Right? And they, for example, they open for open for class, for example, uh, last time for example, can I ITS to oi? If I click now, oi, delete any more um, classroom na ganana we open. So I just have to click back so that uh, it will route me back to the previous page and then I can click the other classroom that I want to I wanna go to, something like that. So basically, the um, it's the internal engine who process the request. Right? And if you can see the browser user interface, the internal engine will do what I want it to do. But like every time that I will send it a command, the internal engine will do it. For example, if you click on reload, the internal engine will reload the entire or will, will refresh the entire screen. Bye sending the request back to the DNS or just the web server and getting it back, okay? So for example, if you click on an area, this will display my extensions. So if I'm going to click that, it will display the um, Chrome extensions that I have installed. So I have here quite a few. I have an Adobe Acrobat Reader, a screenshot or a screen recorder, but I can a screenshot of Tag Askayo, and then Metamask that is for um, crypto. Uh, we have here video downloader para dali na pag-download ng video. And then auto admit. Okay, so auto admit is for one time mo in-join ninyo, magsigira mo mag-accept, sigira ang access, hindi na ako kanalang mag-click. And then Google attendance tracker so that it, it will, I'll be able to check your attendance while we're doing Google Meet. Alright, so basically the internal engine, just basically follow us as a command. Every time that you click something or do something on the browser, the internal engine. But only on the user interface only. Okay. All right. Again, for example, the user click the back button of the browser. The internal engine will then process the request by checking the browser history to get the URL of the previous page so that it can be reloaded again. Now, another component of a browser is a rendering engine. The rendering engine is responsible for translating HTML and CSS, rendering the content on the screen. Actually, not just HTML and CSS, but also JavaScript. Oh, no, no. That's it. Another day, sorry. HTML and CSS today. Sorry. Hold on. Let me read that. Okay. Again, rendering agent responsible for translating HTML and CSS and rendering the content on the screen. So, if the internal engine is responsible for processing requests coming from the um, user interface, the rendering engine is responsible for translating the HTML Katong codes. Basically, it's responsible for translating codes to graphics. That is rendering engine. Okay, and there are different rendering engines used by different web browsers across the globe. So, one is Trident. It is used by Microsoft Internet Explorer and Windows Mobile Explorer. So since nobody uses this anymore, or maybe a few people prefer Internet Explorer. Basic, but basically, um, Microsoft Internet Explorer, Windows Mobile Browser uses Trident. Please take note of this. Basically, these are the different rendering engines. And then we have Gecko. It is used by Mozilla, uh, Mozilla Firefox and Firefox. Firefox OS browsers. So it uses Gecko rendering engine. And then Opera. It's used by Opera Mini, Opera Mobile, and other older Opera browser versions. And then here, those who are using Apple devices, it uses WebKit. WebKit is used by Apple Safari and old Android browsers. And then we have Blink, Blackpink, no. Blink is used by Google Chrome, newer Opera, and Android browser version. Okay, so please take note of this because once we're going to design a website, we will be using this one, two, three, four, five. 
rendering engines to make sure that our website is going to work as well as possible. So again, please take note of this. We will be using this in some cases when we are designing a website. We are going to remember this because na ay mga websites na dili kaya siya mga na for example, imong kini design this specific for Chrome. Therefore, we are using Blink. However, in some cases, dili siya mga na lahi ang isura sa WebKit or sa Apple devices. So to make sure that it will work in any in every device, we have to use the rendering engines. We have to specific design the elements specific to the rendering. Okay, please take note. All right, so just to give you a short story about browsers, and that story is entitled Browser War. In 1990s, during the rise of popularity of the World Wide Web, web browser companies used to compete with each other by offering features and functionalities that other web browsers doesn't have. So, sa unang panahon ni ay nai browser wars because since pagko palang ang ang World Wide Web or the internet at ang time, most of the web browser companies offers a lot of features na wala ina offers na open your browsers, you know, to go and to keep the competition, di ba? For example, si Chrome na asay na asay functionality nga maka maka view of maka play of video niya ang kasang nga web browser wala wala sila inana, so na competition, so each web browser will offer a feature on their own, na wala sa open, you know, to keep the competition. So there was a browser war, and that was very hard day. That was very hard era for web developers. Imagine, mag design ka of website, na mukana sa sa Osaka web browser, but dili siya mukana sa open because the other web browser does not offer the same feature. Okay, so that's like competition sa una. Therefore. Since it's always been a problem, yeah. Mura bag ug magdesign ka website dapat mo design ka sa mo design ka specific for Chrome, mo design ka specific for uh, for Safari. Although these uh, obviously dili na siyang mga kwa nai laing laing nai laing yung mga web browsers sa una. But just an example, ba? imagine you're a the web developer and you have to design your website accordingly in each web browser. So it's, it was a very Hard era for web developers back then. So therefore, the World Wide Web Consortium or W3C uh, was founded. The W3C is the main international standards organization for the World Wide Web. They introduced the web standards, a set of standardized best practices and protocols for building websites. This helped ending the browser war. So since every browser that offers logia a feature that gives a lot of problems with web developers and users as well. Uh, the World Wide Web Consortium was developed so that it basically it creates a lot of web standards that basically ilang gitagaan of list of specification ang kada browser. So meaning ilang ilang share ang ilang mga features so that each browser has their own kuan naslay pareha ng feature sa tanang mga browsers all throughout. That's why Karon, um, it's always it's almost almost 100% of the time, the same browser, uh, your website will work on different web browsers. Although na mga kinagmay, na mga na mga kinagmay nga differences, but most of the time, almost 100% of the time, your website will work the same, or will, will function the same, will display the same with the rest of the browsers. Okay. So that was the browser one. Next, let's talk about the browser's component called the networking components. Networking components are responsible for sending and receiving HTTP requests. Wala lagi pa makita sa pic. Saan lang ka ba kung makita? Can you turn on your cameras, guys? Thank you. Katurang. Pwede pa. Pwede pa. Pero no, erong ka. Ulam mo, ulam mo. I-turn on yung camera sa mga classmate. Erong niyo pa, Luma. Gila, classmate, beta mo. Hapit na ba yung face-to-face? Thank you guys. Yan ra yung camera. Okay. All right. Let's let's talk about face to face later. On. Okay. Thank you. Kana kana kung nako makita kay offered kay ako ng pizza. Thank you. All right. All right. 
Again, networking components are responsible for sending and receiving HR requests. Okay, a while ago we already talked about how the web works. Basically, what the just a DNS server, at the just a web server, and then get the request back to the client, and that is the HTTP. Okay, and at kinsa gasugo ni HTTP para magbuwas ng request, asay boss, which is the networking component. So the HTTP yanong sulugo under yun asa ang iyang post o si networking components. Pero ang post net networking components are the user. HTTP is a protocol that is used for sending and receiving web contents. So, take note of that HTTP is a protocol that is used for sending and receiving web content. Right, and then next, data storage. Data storage is responsible for session management and storing web, web cache and cookies. Cache is a temporary storage for any parts of a web content. Cookies are small pieces of data, usually text files, that the server sends to the browser. Okay, so kinsa nakakita ni Ining Dua before, or not, maybe familiar with that. Anyone? Pag mo browse ka sa ibang cluster website, may may pop up na accept this or cash. Okay, that's right. Okay, that's very good observation. Ah, uh, kundo dito sa. Okay, so mo, maybe you've noticed every time that you visit a website, especially if that is the first time that you visit it using that browser, na mo gawas nga accept cookies or this website uses cookies accept or cancel something like that. What, what exactly that is? Basically, cache and cookies are like session management on our website. It is used for us to be able to use web browsers much faster, much, uh, much easier in the future. Let's talk about a cache. Okay, so, can I cache? Did it say cache nga kanang kulang taron? Tingwin tay. Cache or C A C H E na spelling niya. Did it talk cache nga nani? Cache is a temporary storage for any parts of our web content. For example, let me give you a very good example of what cache is. Um, remember, every time you open, you open a Facebook application, <coughs> diba? every time you open a Facebook application, makita ni mong friends, makita ni mong mga pictures, mga videos, mga likes, mga stories, say mga friends, right? Now, you close your app, palungo ni mo internet, but when you imo palungon mo internet, wala kay mobile data, palungon mo wifi. But still, if you open up Facebook, naragya pun tong mga sulod, naragya pun tong mga picture, naragya pun tong mga videos, kato mga old mga pantang na nakastore. So why is that? That is called cache. So basically, while you while you are connected to the internet, your application or your phone is downloading cache from the website. Para din nasa magsigit reload ba? So Pag i-open mo balik ang imuhang phone, automatic na siyang mo-load. And then if na-connected ka sa internet, dungagan lang niya na pod o mga newer nga mga contents. Kasi lang mo na, nga pag mo-open mo Facebook, bisa kuha ka internet, pero nagi akong kayo makita. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir. Okay. That is called cash. Your, con your application or your phone is trying to download, every time that you open it, it will download contents from the from the website and store it on your phone so that when you open it up, it would be easier to load. And then, kung connected ka sa internet, mo download na po to siya mga newer. Mo na makakita tag mga one minute ago or just now na mga post if we're already connected to the internet. So that is a cache. And web browser, web browser also have cache. So that's why uh, sometimes when you open up a web website with a giga connected sa internet, Talaksar no na siya, but sometimes if you open up a website and click on connected to the internet, it will display the previously loaded contents in one screen. And then cookies. And they always ang naka display every time that you visit a website, especially if it's the first time that you'll see. Cookies is something that I'm eating now. <laughs> cookies are small pieces of data or usually text files. One good example of that is. Okay, for example, diba? When we visit a website, we usually see this. Uh, this site uses cookies, 
And sometimes it will give you an offer nga pwede nimo i-accept or pwede nimo i-close lang. But sometimes wala kay wala kay choice but just to accept the cookies. What happens if you mong i-accept the cookies? Here for example, ato na ni discuss last time, but one example is forms. Diba kay text file man siya. Going back to the definition, text files. That the server sends to the browser. So one example of that is our forms. For example, this file ka of um, NBI clearance. You need to fill out kasi mo first name, sa mo last name, sales. Yeah, since imong since imong di accept ang cookies, katong mga text files nga imo ang di enter, it will be saved to the to your computers, sa imo browser, so that next time that you will use that same computer or that same browser, kung open, for example, mo yung mo kalan Steve, last name is Rogers, and then you click save. Next time that you're going to visit the same website, pag click mo ang first name, naanay mo gawas nga, drop down with Steve. Na pag pwede lang nimo na i-click, or you can enter a new one. Diba? And then, same with the last name. Na pag i-click mo, naanay siya drop down, naanay siya suggestion. Okay? Asa na agi ka? That is because you accepted the cookies. Okay? <clears throat> so, basically, most websites already uses that cookies and then actually that is also one way of getting your information link that's why karon da kana kaita mag mag da kaching spam text especially the anti card information sa imong contact information online and it's because of cookies na iya ko on ang mga text files yang is sent sa browser and then basically it will be saved in the server so ni sa reason nga da kan spam text but that is cookies so basically these are Fine. Uh, these are the data components of a web browser. So now today I data component and web browsers. And then I guess this would be the last, the JavaScript interpreter. JavaScript interpreter is another rendering engine that renders client-side scripts, particularly the JavaScript. So we already know that browsers can only, browsers can only render Talang yan ito yung kayong ma-render lang. We have HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. More ginay kaya niyang i-render sa atong web browser. That's why, kung mag-visit ang website, ang web server, for example, kanimu yung web server, yes ang i-convert ang contents. For example, if it uses PHP programming language, MySQL database, yes ang i-convert ang PHP uh, MySQL and any other programming languages or scripting language, it converts an EM to HTML before sending it back to the client. The reason why? Because browsers can only render HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Okay? For this, mo render any HTML or CSS? Insert a component? Rendering engine, sir. Rendering engine. Okay, rendering engine. And then for JavaScript is and it's the JavaScript interpreter. It's another rendering engine that renders client-side scripts, particularly the JavaScript. So it only has one job and one job only, and that is to render JavaScript codes or JavaScript, basically. All right, so that is web browsers. So we already know what uh, the, the its components and how exactly or kids are responsible for sending and kids are responsible for sending and receiving web requests. What's the component? HTTP, sir. No, yeah. Kids are kids are responsible for HTTP para mapadana na siya. What's the component of the browser? It was the networking component. Okay. Okay. Take note of that. It will be part of your assessment. Next, the domain name network system. Component. <laughs> the domain name system or DNS server. Uh, the DNS server is a hierarchical naming system for network devices. It serves as the phone book. When you're the best 
uh, description or explanation of what a DNS server is. It serves as the phone book of the internet, but instead of phone numbers, it uses IP or internet protocol addresses. When a web server hosts a website, a unique IP address is assigned to the user in locating its content. This IP address will be registered to the DNS server. Okay. Since memorizing these IP addresses may take a lot of work for us humans, the DNS comes to help. Okay, so every time that every website, okay, so every website has its own web server. And that web server, that web server has its own IP address. Okay, so let's go back to our very first topic. We all know that the World Wide Web consists of millions of computers around the globe and connected to each other. And how it is connected? For, for two devices to be connected, they have their own IP addresses. Para maka connect siya. So, the same case with the DNS server. The DNS server saves the IP addresses of all the computers that are connected to the internet. So, every when a web server hosts a website, a unique IP address is assigned to be used in locating its content. You're reloading lagi ko. Madamog lang ko, guys. Narakit connection? Yes, sir. Okay. Nag-reloading mag-good ako ang web ako. Browser. Anyway, so again, we all know that each computer that are connected to the internet has their own IP address, right? That includes the servers. So, those IP ad ad addresses will be saved in the domain name system servers so that it will be used to locate the, app, the computer that we try not to have access, we try not to have, or the web server that we are trying to access, something like that. So just think of DNS server as a phone book of the internet. But since, uh, but, but instead of phone numbers, it uses IP addresses. Ano man, kinahalan ta of DNS server? Anyone? Go ahead, Costalet. So, um, since URL transfer, so we need to find the addresses then through the DNS server. Okay? The DNS server will be the one to find the content through the IP addresses. Then after that, because of that, the URL will be converted to HTML, then that's why the content is created. Okay, thank you. So through the DNS server, we can see the content. Okay, that's correct. But in surgery, ngano man, ngano kinahanan, pwede rin, kita rin mo enter sa DNS server. Ngano man kinahanan, ako sa IP address. Ah, because you can't say, we can't, the IP, there are many IP addresses, sir, and we can't, like, there are many numbers like that. So, through one, dito na siya ba? Ah, that's right. Okay, so the same case, using our phones, di ba? Isura yung memorize, akong na-memorize nga number, ako aragod. I used to memorize the phone of my father's phone number. Ayan, gigamit for 10 years, siguro to niya nga number. Pero, gislan man niya, kaya ka na yung naka-port, naka-nana siya yung smartphone, katong yung SIM card, wala man to yung, wala to yung internet pa ba? Kanang, ah, na siya internet, pero kanang, basta, da, since daan na siya kaayo, dako siya kaayo, I mean, dako kaayo siya ng SIM card, niya karo ng mga smartphones ron, kaya nana SIM naman. So, ever since he changed his number, uh, one ako ka memorize, the only number that I memorized is my own because I'm using it for GCash. <laughs> Alright, so the same so the same case, why do we need DNS server? It's because there are millions of computers around the globe and it's very impossible for a human to memorize all of those IP addresses. That's why it uses DNS server. Okay, so Anna Denny, so if ang work ang trabaho sa domain in system server is like a phone number, meaning the contention of IP addresses. So, pwede na itang mag-visit the website using its own IP address for the Same nga, pwede, rat, pwede tang mulaktod sa phone book. For example, na-memorize na itong number sa itong friend, itong tawagan. Hindi na takin na lang mo aging phone book, right? I-enter na lang nato ang number. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay, so do you think if we're going to visit a website and we know the IP address, yeah, ang atong yes, enter is, web, is IP address lang, do you think we'll be able to visit the website? What do you think? I don't think so. Ah, so you try. Wala ko yung na-memorize. Let's try to Google a one. For example, Google tayo. Ay, katong sa Norso. Ang sa itong IP sa address sa Norso, ang ipakita kanina. Let me go back. 
i-trend ito, ito i-confirm na nga theory. If, kung sa phone book, uh, kung sa cell phones, pwede na itong dial number diretso, hindi na ito maging phone book. What if, this time, we will use IP address directly? Uh, let's try it. Let's try it. Let's try IP address on our show. Okay, let's try to locate that. It's, ay, kaso mo rin ka usob, siguro. So, let's try it. 103.68.157.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
access kung saan niya nga mapadali niya ya ang pagpangita sa IP address sa imong website. Ay mo ipangita. So it will be divided into two ways, two activities. And that will be through the root name server and the dot com server. So the top level domain has two systems. We have the root name server and the dot com server. So first is yang i break down ang URL. So for example, nursu.edu, okay, Facebook na lang. Okay, since we're talking about international man. For example, facebook.com. All right? So the first part is the domain name. The dot com is the server, right? So what's going to happen is para madali niya ang pagpangita sa top level domain since there are millions of IP addresses. So it will divide it and the URL will divide it into two. First one is the domain name and the dot com. So, una niya pangita is ang domain name at ito niya pangita on sa root name server. So, first, the the top level domain contains the root name server. That contains all the, all the, koan, maybe, agka to siyang domain name lang sa niya ba, or the root name lang sa niya. The root name server will locate, will try to look for Facebook. Kaya pangita on sa niya ang word nga Facebook. Then, if naa siya, if naa niya ang word nga Facebook, then, that's the time that we proceed to the next step, which is the .com server. This time, pangitaon niya ang word na Facebook within the .com server. Alright? So again, we are trying to visit Facebook.com. First thing it's going to do, the root name server will try to locate if naabay website nga ka start of Facebook. Then if, if naa, then it will proceed to the .com server that contains the IP addresses. Pangitaon niya ang IP address sa website nga naay ngalan nga Facebook. I guess? Yes, sir. Alright. So, again, uh, let's start over. Let me erase that. Erase na ako na. Nga itataglay yung example. Okay. YouTube. Um, so, okay. YouTube.com. Enter it on YouTube. So, again, para mapadali na ito ang pag-visit sa YouTube, <coughs> yeah, if wala siya sa local ISP DNS server, the first thing that's gonna do is go to the root name, look for, kung siya pangitaon niya, if ka niya ang URL. YouTube nga, ako ang sir. Okay, YouTube nga, root name. Pangitaon sa niya yes, sa list, listahan, kumbaga, sa listahan. Uy, natay na, natay na kasave na YouTube niya, naabos. Okay, pag yung naabos, dito na. Okay, proceed dito sa root name server, pagkuhaan dito yung IP address. Something like that. <laughs> okay, so, muna yung dua katao ni magtrabaho, may ngon si root name server nga, boss, naatay YouTube diha, may ngon dahil si .com, check sa inyong listahan, oh, naadari yung number. Okay, ino niya si HTTP nga. Okay, dito proceed sa .com server, kuha dito yung IP address. Alright, and then the process continue, going to the web server, and then the server to the client. Okay, so something like that. However, if wala good, if First, we check na niyang local ISP, wala dito to yung IP address, wala po sa top level domain, what's gonna happen? Wala dito. If the URL is not present in both, is not present in both the local ISP DNS server and the top level domain, what's gonna happen? For example, wala siya sa local ISP, wala po siya sa top level domain, lagi hapon. What's going to happen is, you will get an error message saying DNS error. Naka-experience ba po? Ano? Naka-try mo nga error? Maybe may ngon siya nga DNS could not be found, or DNS error, or the website cannot be found, something like that. Naka-experience mo, Ana? Yes, sir. Okay, what that? Unsay pa sa bot, Ana? Alam na yung sis. Okay, go ahead, grab, Ana. Go ahead. Wala nga exist in both the local ISP server and the top level domain. Meaning, it could be nga nasa'yo pa na kao ka-enter sa URL or maybe na, ano na, more than a possible nga explanation na sa'yo pa na kao ka-enter sa URL. Okay. So, however, DNS caching helps the retrieval faster by saving the IP address to the local ISP DNS server. ISP DNS server. 
That means if you visit the same website within 24 hours, there will be no need to retrieve the IP address to the top level domain again, thus making the loading process faster. So what's going to happen is katong ginina, kung nakagipangita sa ang, uh, diba? uh, if wala sa ISP, mo, mo check sa, sa top level domain. But and then proceed. However, if you visit the same website within 24 hours again, katonga IP address will be will be now saved in the local ISP. So, muna sometimes every time you visit a website again, it will be faster than before. Because if if nakuha na siya sa top level domain, is save mo siya sa local ISP next time. So next time, din siya mabalik sa, sa top level domain because ang IP address is nakasave na siya sa uh, local ISP and the server. Alright, so do you have any questions so far with the DNS? Wala ra? Okay. None so far. Right. Last system is the web server. Web servers are just any computer installed with specialized application and components intended for serving web requests. Web hosting is a term referring to hosting a website or a web page onto a web server. All right, so again, web servers are just any computer, okay? Any computer installed with specialized applications and components intended for web, uh, serving web requests. So basically, bisa kaning laptop na hong gigamit karon, or maybe if you have your own laptops, even your phone can be a web server. So long as you have to install the required applications needed. If you have any applications needed for web server, web serving, or serving web request, then your device like phone, your computer, your laptop can be a web server too. All right? And then web hosting is a term referring to hosting a website or a web page onto a web server. Now, if you can also compute it. So if I have a laptop, I have a web server for my website. There's a few things that I have to make sure. First is to install the necessary application called WebStack. We'll talk more about it later. And another very important thing is do not turn off your computer. If your computer is used to gamit siya para server, kung i-turn off ni mo ang imong computer, dili na ma-access ang imong ang website. It's because naka-off man ang server. Okay? So again, just remember, web servers are not just katong nang. Siguro mag-imagine tawag web server sa tuyo nang mga dagko ka ayong nang mga computers. That's true, but any computer can be a web server too, so long as na ashay capability and installed with specialized application, right? Specialized applications and make sure that it doesn't turn off. So you have to keep the servers on at all times. All right, so here's how website works. When hosting, websites are stored in the web server as a series of files and folders, just like saving a file in a computer's local disk. So, if this is the server, mone ang computer, uh, as you save ang imuhang website, so nasa root folders. The root folders contain, for example, images, CSS, scripts, index.html, about.html. So, inside the image folder, you have the images. Inside the CSS folder, you have the CSS files. Inside the scripts, you have the JavaScript files, so on and so forth. So basically, it's the same. You can save your save ang imong files sa imong folders sa imong computer. It's the same in the same case with web servers. Actually, akong laptop is not a web server, so let me show it to you how it looks like. It uses XM. Okay. So for example, in my XM in HCDocs, docs kani. So these are the list of websites installed in my computers. All right. So for example, kaning last na kung gigama is kaning sa kung mas masters na ako. Let me open it up. Ay lang yung mula ka kung computer. Mas kaya Let me open it up. X. Um, let's turn off the server so I can show it to you. <coughs> okay. Start. Start. All right, so let's talk about, let's, first, before we see the actual website, let's see how it looks like. Basically, Monet, for example, can you have a website, 
to get a new file saved on your files in your computer, it's the same case on how it's saved on the web server as well. So again, my computer is a web server, so let me open this up, the AS sales invoice. So, we enter na po ang iyahang address, which is localhost slash DAS uh, sales Pag enter na ko ang iyahang, ang iyahang uh, address, it will display the website. So, muna siya ang website. Basically, this is a project that I made for my masters. So, muna siya mag kauban ba? Um, process order. So, for example, palit ko motor. Palit ko uh, Honda Rebel 500. Pila pa ko palit ko. And then, add order. You can say, customer si Julius. Salesperson kay si Tony Stark. If I'm going to click proceed, oh, yun, nasa error. Alright, <laughs> nasa nasa error. But anyway, it's the same case ba? What about, it's, it's, the website is here. I can see it in my screen. However, how you, how do you save it on your, on the web server? It's just how you save files on your computer. So, naadari ang akong mga scripts, the PHP scripts. And then we have here the database. Alright, so let's open up another website nga naka-save here. We have ITS 306. Ano na? So, kicks kani. Uh, let's visit this website. This is this this is katong website nga mga ma last semester. Kani, mga mga ma last sem. Kani. So soon we'll also be able to do websites like this. Or we'll be doing something like this. So it appears in my screen right now, just like this. However, it, this is how it is saved. Diba? Nadri ang mga scripting languages like the PHP. We have here the images. Nagigamit. Kana. And then, um, basically the bootstrap. And then CSS files. Napuliha. And then, admin. Um, admin. So, ni pages. Napuliha. Basically, just remember that when you file, save a file on your computer, it's also the same case on how you save the file. Or on the server, it's the same thing, how you save files on your computer. So, for example, we'll visit the website, uh, nursu.pdu.ph. Kanyang <laughs> atoon is, atoon niya computer o asa nakasave ang website or ang server. And then the web server will look for the files necessary for the request. So, for example, gipangita ra niya, akong gipangita na ko, index.html, then kwa on yung index.html, and then together with the pictures or graphics that the index.html uses, and then send it back to the client, for example, kind of send it back to the client. Basically, that's it. For dynamic websites, the server processes and translate the application data and database scripts into client side languages like HTML before it will be sent back to the web browser. So this is where the dynamic website, this is how the dynamic website works. So, <clears throat> if I remember, Atom web browsers can only um, read or can only uh, render HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. What will happen if Atom website can be visited? It's not a other language, gamut. For example, PHP and MySQL. So, diba? Um, the web browsers or the web servers will translate those into HTML. It translates any into HTML and then send it back to the client so that our client or our web browser will be able to read it. So basically, it uses web application and database to process the request to convert to convert these files. So web application, for example, for PHP. So a web server not just picking a web application. So that it that will be able to convert into an HTML. Okay, that contains the database and the um, the database and the scripts converted into HTML. Alright, so unsa gani gamiton para makonvert ang ubang scripts into HTML? Unsa gamiton niya? Web application. Yes, but on the on the server side, 
it converts an IA using web application and database. Convert that into HTML, and then once the HTML is ready, send it back to the client. Okay, again, it uses web application and database to convert the HTML to HTML. Just like that. Now, yun sa man, yun sa niya na yung pag-convert ang web application and database. That would be through this, web stacks. Web stacks consist of web, web stack, web servers consist of web stacks. Web stacks are groups of software that work together to build and process websites. Web stacks are what make any computer a web server. Okay? So, para mahimong web server ang imong computer, you just have to install web, a web stack. What exactly is a web stack? Here, the web stack usually consists of an operating system, web server, database server, and a programming language. Okay? So, programming language is the same case with the web application. Okay, so again, since web servers consist of web stacks and web stacks are groups of software man, so they lang siya o saraka software yung kinalang yung install sa imuhang computer para mahimu siyang web server. You need an operating system, a web server, a database, and a programming language. Okay, well, kinahan lang taan yung opat para mahimu web server ang atong computers. However, most of the time, gina offer siya kaning nanay big server, server, web server, database server, and programming language into one application only because always matang na operating system, right? Our computers have their own operating system. What is an operating system, by the way? Try to give an example, anyone? Windows. Windows. Ipasig right. yes. na sa kanyar tao, patakay lag operating system. Example is Windows. Wow. Right now, I'm using Windows 11. So that is the operating operating system. So since each computer, since it, each working computer has their own operating system, so ang kinalan na lang natong install is ang web server, ang database server, okay, let me, that's web server, database server, and programming language na lang. Okay, na naman yung operating system sa mga itong computers, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, so let's talk about the functionalities of each of these app, um, application. First is operating system. So we already know what that is. It supports the web service function. Para rajud mo gana itong computer, kinalang tawag operating system because that is the soul of our computers. Next, web server. It processes web requests. So mo siya itig process of HTTP request. Kung sa hotel pa ni siya, siya mo yung concierge. Right? Siya mo yung concierge or siya mo yung front desk. Okay? Siya mo itig receive sa request. Siya mo itig release the request that is the web server and then database server stores data from the website and process data request so most dynamic website have their own database for example asa man nakabuta ang numbers sa imong likes ang mga comments gibutan na sa imong facebook dito na gibutan na siya sa database special database from facebook so para makita nimo og pila ka ang ni likes sa imong page Therefore, you will need data from the database server. And then lastly, we have programming language. Again, um, for our website to work, it needs to be written on a programmable language. And that exam one example is PHP, Python, Java, etc. Okay, but just to give you an idea, this course will be using PHP in the future. So basically, it translates programming scripts from the website. Okay, para mugana ang PHP. Okay, again, computers can only run HTML and CSS, JavaScript, right? Para mapagana ni mong PHP, kinan lang kami install o PHP application sa mga computer. In this case, on your web stack. Okay, so LAMP is one of the most commonly used web stack. LAMP uh, means Linux. Apache, MySQL, and PHP. So most uh, most of the time, we use LAMP. If atong iho sa internet or sa World Wide Web, we use LAMP. It uses Linux operating system. It uses Apache as the web server, MySQL as the database server, 
and PHP as the programming language. Okay, so that muna siya pinakagamit sa online or sa World Wide Web. However, we also have uh, notable websites that maybe some of us are already familiar. First is Mac. So for Apple users, they use Mac. Mac OS, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. So ang Mac OS, mauna siya ang OS, operating system. Apache is the web server. MySQL is the database server. And then PHP is the programming language. Okay? And then WAMP. Again, nakadong na siguro tag WAMP before, right? Kinsa? Nakadong na. Or nakatry, nakagamit. So, Norso uses WAMP and XAMP. Dependent as instructor. So for WAMP, we have Windows, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. So Windows is the operating system, Apache is the web server, MySQL is the database a server, and then PHP is the programming language. And then here, pinakasikat sa tanan nato is the XAMP. X stands for cross-platform. So manang X, cross-platform, that means it can use it or it supports multiple operating systems. So, ang, map, ang WAMP, it will only use for specific OS. So, ang WAMP is for Windows only, and MAMP is only for Mac OS, but XAMP can be used for multiple operating systems. So, it could be either Windows, Mac OS, Linux, so on and so forth. So, that's why it's called cross-platform. That's why it is represented with letter X. And then, A stands for Apache. That is the web server. And then, double P, Dwaka P stands for PHP and uh, and M is MySQL. M is MySQL. And MariaDB. So MariaDB is also another database server. And ang Duaka P stands for PHP and Perl. So PHP is the programming language as well as the Perl. Okay? So that's why it, we use XAMP because it's just more mas versatile siya. So that's it. Okay? So that that's it. That is the web server. Basically, that is how the World Wide Web works in a much detailed explanation. Do you have any questions? Do you have any questions here? Nai, sir. Nai, mga wala na sabta. Anyone? Okay. All right. So. Just to recap, let me shut down my recording. Up.